Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, cool. So here is our phase five final capstone project presentations. Y'all have been working super hard for three weeks and extra. So uh, looking forward to seeing what everyone's got. Uh, we've got eight people presenting today. Um, got a couple of people that can't do it. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's do it. Let's just go alphabetical order. So uh, we will start off with uh, Alex talking us through your chore chart. Show us what you got. Hey, y'all. Um, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. So we got, we, we had, I had a bit of a rebranding since the last time we met. <laughs> it's, it's now, uh, Chore Heroes. Um, so I, my, my render, it render spins down after a few minutes of not using it. So it just spun down. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it to wake up here. Um, come on, buddy. This might take us. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. So here is our main menu. Um, we can create a, an account. I'll go ahead and just log into the one I have right now. Um, I, I'm I'm showing y'all the mobile view. I put I put a lot of effort into making it cute on mobile. So um, yeah, I'm just going to show y'all the mobile version. Uh, so here's our main page or, or home page, which is very simple. Um, if you have charts, it'll list your charts here. Um, and or obviously you can make a new chart, which will take you through this prompt and answer a few questions like the name of it. Um, I, I implemented a, a cron task that will rotate the charts every Monday morning. And you can right here, you can say if you want to just rotate it yourself or if you want uh, the app to do it for you. Um, and you can always change it later. Uh, then you'll start listing the people that your heroes, which are basically just the people um, who will be doing chores on your chart. Um, you can provide an email if you want the, uh, the, the person to get an email every time their chore changes, um, but you don't have to. Uh, and then you also would list out your chores um that you want to be on there um and you know i have like this handy little like kind of dynamic form that'll you can add and remove as many uh as you as you need um so let's just go to one i already have um here's for a, a fictitious uh frat house um so this is what the chore wheel looks like um uh, so we've got everybody on here and their chore. If the chore is too long, it'll it'll kind of give you a dot, dot, dot. You can always click on these to get more uh, details. So we can see Logan is on uh, Keep Living Space Tidy. Um, and then there's some more details at the bottom here. Mow the yard, Edge 2. Um, uh, so I've also got this bulletin board for every chore. So you can post stuff, um, you know. And it'll it'll show up like this. Uh, and then I've got this settings menu where you can kind of tweak everything. Um, you can go into chart. Um, the auto rotate feature you can update here. Um, you know, you can rename it. You can delete the whole chart if you wanted to. Um, chores, you can you can edit the chores that already exist, or at the bottom here, you could add a whole new chore. And then for heroes, you know, same deal. You can you can edit the heroes that exist, um, delete the heroes, or you can add a new one. Um, or go back. Yeah, you can add a new hero down here. And then there's also this feature, um, add a new user, where uh, if you want to give another or heroes, uh, another person with a chore heroes account access. You just provide their username here, and that would just give them access to do whatever they want with the chart. 
Um, yeah. And so, I mean, I suppose I'll, I'll show you all what that looks like. So we can see here, um, Alex only has access to one chart. Um, and let's go, let's just like walk through creating a new account. I'll make one for Bill here, password Bill. Go ahead and sign up. Um, then we can see, you know, make it make a new chart. Uh, I'll here. You know what I'll do instead is I'll go back to now that we have Bill. I'll go back to Alex and uh, go to settings. Add a user. We're gonna add Bill. So success. Um, let's go. Let's go back into Bill now. And as you can see, we've got uh, that chart here. And we can, you know, Bill can now go in and uh, say we need to, we need to add a new chore for, uh, you know, kitchen duty. Put some details here. Um, and that uh, adds kitchen duty here. Um, okay, one more thing is, um, so, it was it was kind of tough getting the uh, uh, the logic to work. So like if you delete a task, it'll like um, you know kind of ruin the flow of the wheel. So I, I would if if there were more tasks than chores or more chores than tasks, I had to implement um, either nobody on a task or a free space if if there were more uh, people than tasks on there. So. Like let's uh, make that happen. I'll add, I'll add another hero. It sounds like it should be Bill. And then so so now Bill is on a free space, as you can see here. Um, and then the inverse of that. So I'll just delete a couple chores. I'll, I'll delete keep living space tidy. Um, and then oh wait, I did it backwards. <laughs> So I need to I need to add more chores. So let's just add a couple chores here. So when I added those, those just replaced the free spaces that were there. Um, if I if I add another one, um, you can see now nobody is on that chore. So um, and you know you can hit you can hit rotate and it'll uh, it's going to ask if you're sure because it's going to send an email to folks letting them know what their new chore is. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, everything should have moved just one space over here, and then uh, let's see. And then I'll show you all the email. Um, let's see if I'm signed up for this one. Yeah, here they are. So we can see, hello, Bart, you're on garbage duty, Friday morning pickup, take it out all week. Those are the details. Um, this is I just a little little uh, note that everybody who wanted an email will get. Um, yeah, so I think that's, uh, that's what I got. Awesome, that looks great. Uh, hey, give, give that a round of applause, super cool. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, say again what uh, what you used to hook up the email stuff? Uh, yeah. So I used um, I used uh, Action Mailer, mm -hmm. um, which was you know built into all the the Rails stuff I had already going. Yeah. And I also used I had to get a an email API hooked up, which was for I used SendGrid for it. Awesome. And I, I had some issues with it because I just had issues getting the, the key yeah. like formatted correctly. And at one point I was just like, I don't care if it's even hidden. I just want to see if it works. So I just put the key on there and that didn't work. And turns out it's because they they won't do it if it's not properly encrypted. So yeah, I, I had a few issues, but now now it works. It was a great learning experience. Awesome. Yeah. The API integration or 
email integration can be uh, fraught sometimes. So yeah, yeah, it's great. It's cool. And the the cron task was I, I set it up in render. It was super easy. To yeah. Set up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, those are those are always good to do. <laughs> all sorts of fun, fun things you can do with cron tabs. Totally, yeah. Um, cool. What 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 was your uh, favorite part about this? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's for me, it's kind of always the buttons. Honestly, like mm -hmm. I loved, I, I loved just making a like it looks really nice on your phone, and I'm just really happy with that. Nice. So, yeah. Cool. And uh, what what part did you find like uh, the most struggle with? Well, I was pretty intimidated by the emails for whatever reason. Oh, and but once it start started working, it was ultimately pretty easy to figure out. Also, honestly, getting a lot of the logic to work, like with at like if if you add a chore and there's more chores than people or all that stuff, like I had constant bugs mm. that I think I've pretty much fleshed out because i've tried to break it so much um yeah awesome cool um anyone else have questions all right that looks super good uh cool uh, let's see who is up next armin with neurofocus hello everyone hey hope you guys are doing well just share it real quick Okay, are you guys able to see the screen? Okay, so my project's pretty much the same in terms of the main elements. So first I have my calendar. Um, I thought I wanted to do a calendar a Google Calendar API, but after our last discussion about using libraries, um, I decided to just use the React Calendar API. So as of right now, um for this, um it's just a regular calendar and then um you can see your events for um, each day and then you can delete events. Um, also have an event form. So this uh, depends on, depending on what date you pick, the date will change based on that. Um, so if I wanna add an event for the six, I'll just select six and then I'll just enter the event name, dance class, and it'll, it'll go for that date only. So that event won't pop up. So for today, I have this event, so I can delete it once it's done. And then, um, yeah, so that's that's how the calendar works. And then I also have a to-do. Um, that's also pretty similar to the last time, just um, did some CSS changes. Um, I can add um, a task for today, this week, this month, and then your long-term goals. And then if I do done, I gain a point for completing a task. I try to make it like a game. So it's fun to be productive. And then if you delete, the task goes away. You just don't get a point. So that works for all of those. And then I still have the puzzle. <laughs> and then you can change the dimensions here to like whatever difficult difficulty you want. Um, so I'll try to do this. And then if you are able to solve it, you'll gain a point. I think I just got a point. And then you can um, click to load a new puzzle. So like a new um, picture will pop up. So I just wanna see, so the points work. Yeah, so you'll get a point for each puzzle um, you solve. And then another element I have is like a habit tracker. So um, you can add whatever habit you want and it'll get added here. And then it'll also show how many habits you've completed. So today the completion is 0%. So each time you complete, your percentage goes up. Um, and then I'll continue to do so for 100%. The math is in a way that every time you add, oh, the percentage will adjust. And then on the next day, you can just reset. Right now, there's a bug when I reset, it only resets some of them. So sometimes I have to double click, but your points will remain um, for your completed. And then you can delete a habit. And then the next feature I have is just your profile. Um, you can update your name. And then, oh, this was my username. And then I can update my name, my age, and then 
your sex. And then this is just your scores. Um, so how many puzzles you've solved, how many tasks you've completed, and then your habits that you completed. And then I also have a logout feature. So this will take me to the front for the login. And then I can also register a new account. So if I do, um, I'll do Mark. <laughs> I'll do 30. Picture. If I create an account, I'll create that. I just have a bug that if I try to log back in for some reason, it'll render the to do's. Let me see if I can work. Mark. If I do that, the only um, things that, that is happening is, oh, the habits that my habits that I created under my account is showing up for the other person's account. So I need to go back. I didn't realize that till last minute because I was working through my own <laughs> ID only. So once I was trying to um, figure out if everything was working correctly, this is when I figured it out. So I just need to make sure that to fix how my habit is being rendered but the profile itself will be fine. So it'll be marks. It's just uh, this. Yeah. Yeah, other than that, that's it. Cool, that looks great. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, I'll ask you the same stuff. Um, what was uh, what was your favorite part working on this? Um, I really liked the calendar, I think, because that was the the one that I was most nervous about but after talking about libraries um with all of you last time I decided to go with the library so it was super fun cool being able to finish something that I was nervous about awesome and uh, um, what did you struggle with the most uh maybe got getting into my head a little too much <laughs> with the project and um yeah that's it I don't think anything any single thing was too hard. Um, I struggled with deployment a little because I did this entire thing from scratch instead of using like the template. Oh, nice, awesome. So, but that gave me issues with deployment. So I'm still working on that. Yeah, cool. Uh, that looks great. Other other questions that anyone has? Sweet, round of applause again. Um, cool, next up we've got Grace, it's a date. What do we got? Okay. Um, all right. Let me get this big on the screen here. It's going to look a little bit, well, I'll have the code on one side. So I'm going to tape the full screen. Um, so I did not get everything done that I was wanting to with this, but it was it's still coming along and there's still so many things I want to do. This is definitely a continuing project for me, um, which I actually am enjoying a lot so i am absolutely fine with that there's a lot of things that i can do with this that i want to do with it um all right so can you all see my screen did i select the right one okay cool um so i have my home page which i'm also still gonna spruce this up a little bit i'd like to add some like animations or drawings or something and make this part stand out a little bit more um, but I have where you can create a user here. And right now I realized also right before this that the um, the user, I think that's Google might be keeping some of that in there, my password manager. So I need to figure out why that's showing up there. Haven't had a chance to look into it, but um, I definitely have it saved over here. So I can log in and then it takes you to the dashboard and a lot of the other, this kind of brings together a lot of the other elements on one place, but I have the different um, activities that you can do for a date. Um, and you can also edit them like right here, which this one would be really easy. Um, and they're all working um, as well. So it's kind of nice you can do that right there. And then here you have all of the dates and all the relationships all together, you know, one page. Um, if you click on a relationship, it'll switch to that one and it'll show you the dates with that for that relationship. Um, you know, go through them and then can go back to all of them. If you create a relationship 
uh, or a date on this page. Um, let me just do something real quick here. Um, it'll also have it show up there. Um, so that's the dashboard. Then the dates page is specifically just for um, building dates for the people. And if you go to the relationship page and you select one of the relationships when you go to date, that's what will be selected there. Uh, so it's held in state. And yeah, then keep creating dates. And then I'm going to add more of these and have these where you can scroll through them and search through them. So you have ideas, um, which I had not quite gotten to yet. Um, and then activities, kind of a similar thing. Again, we'll get to where I can scroll through, add them. Um, and then I started adding a calendar and also have not gotten that finished out yet, but have a the starting of it um, as well. So those are kind of the main things there so far. Awesome. Um, what if uh, you know working for it on yeah working on it for another week or two? Uh, what would you like to accomplish on it? Um, definitely get the calendar working because I think mm -hmm. that'd be pretty cool. Add the scrolling bits around this as well, so it doesn't just keep adding down the page. Um, especially on the dashboard page, so it keeps it more contained in the things in their containers. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to add a um, email integration where you can like email an invitation to somebody that might not have like an account yet that you want to like start a relationship with. And so there can be more collaboration um, for people that are sharing, um, like might have a relationship together so it can connect those. So you can then also create dates and activities together, mm -hmm. um, which is ultimately when I what I wanna build this into, which I think would be really fun. Um, one of the other things I was working on that I didn't quite get finished out with this because it was one of the things that was most um, difficult for me. And it came down to like one line of code <laughs> <laughs> um, to just get figured out, but um, is having it because I had a couple of join tables and I hadn't done a whole lot with join tables with um, like post requests and then like getting stuff back for the other one and just how to make those connect with like sending parameters and um, getting everything to update like I wanted. So that was just a lot trickier than what we've done so far. And it was really fun getting to to work in that just it, it took a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Um, but one of the things I'm going to have here is where I can, um, I figured out how to do it through the relationship part, but have this where I can add activities to dates from here. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll also be through the join table. What I ended up having to do, and it was this one line of code um, where when I was creating the relationship, I wanted everything that was showing up to be for you know the, the current user. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything is filtered through that. Um, and so I had to create the relationship with all the like normal parameters that we'd have there and then have this line of code where it takes the current user relationships and then adds the relationship to that. Awesome. Um, which took me way too long to figure out for that like <laughs> little bit of code, but got yeah. it. Um, and that was gonna make the date and relationship part a lot easier mm -hmm. um, since I, I finally figured that out. Nice. Uh, what was your favorite part that you worked on? Um. I don't, I, honestly, I was having a lot of fun with all of it, really. Um, I liked the the styling at the end, but I also liked trying to figure out how to get the different relationships to work well with the join tables. Um, that was a fun challenge and um, I feel like very, very useful and helpful to know. So I'm glad that there's a good bit of that on this um as well so i think why that was one of the more challenging things was also one of the more fun things awesome cool that looks awesome um sweet anyone have any other questions cool well, that looks great give it up 
Cool. I'll uh, see. Up next, uh, Jasper, home space. Yeah, let me share my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, so I was working on this uh, home space uh, app, which is like a home service providing, uh, online providing a platform, uh, online service providing platform. Uh, so basically I uh, put five services here, which you can see on the dashboard. It automatically scrolls and um, you can register yourself here. In this form, you have uh, you have to select your role if you are a user or if you are a service provider. In case you are a service provider, there will be one more field opening up for you where you have to select what kind of service you are going to provide. And um, basically, you have to put on uh, put your email, password, address, state, um, zip code, and your phone number. Um, I'll just log in with my email. Oh, I think I put. Okay, I'm logged in. So if you want to create a new service request, I logged in as a user. So as a client, I uh, can select basically any uh, service. I can book any service through this form. I can select, uh, for example, home painting. Um, you, can uh, you can write your description like five rooms, uh, two halls. You can select your suitable dates, um, eight, nine. You can select as many as you want. And then you can request for a quote. So basically, once you uh, submit this form, you cannot uh, change the request details. So it will ask you if you want to really submit this request or you want to make any changes. So if you're sure, you can submit it. And request is submitted. Um, so now you can go back to the home space. Uh, um, main dashboard and here in your request, these are my earlier requests. So it's all showing up. The latest one is created here and it will show up here. Um, now, in order to see the quotes, I have to move uh, basically to my service provider. Oh, one second. Why is it not sliding? <laughs> yeah. So basically I here I can log in as a uh, service provider. So I have already prepared one ID. Uh, I'm logging in as a painter because I uh, created a request for painting. So I just want to show you how it works. Uh, so basically, if I log in here, okay, <clears throat> when I log in as a service provider, uh, only um, requests, service requests related to that uh, job profile would be shown on the dashboard. So if I am a painter, I will only be able to see the paint uh, home rec uh, the requested uh, part for the painters. And if I'm an electrician, I can only uh, view the electricity requests, electrician's request. Uh, here, if I go, uh, basically, if I go here, I ask, uh, I just I just wanted to see here, okay. I cannot add a quote here because I already added a quote for the previous request. So once you have added a quote for a request, you cannot add again. Uh, for the new request, basically, uh, it will, uh, you can add a quote. So I can add here uh, my comments. Okay, I'll get the paint. Um, your charges maybe 900 you can send quotation so your quote is submitted successfully now on the user side i can see my request and i can see the uh, quotation submitted for this request 
so Chen has submitted this request for nine hundred dollars, and I can confirm this. So you can add as many quotes as uh, like you can get as many quotes as you want. So once you confirmed, it will stop. Uh, it will stop the service request and it will stop getting the quotes. So once I confirm this, I will get an email from basically home space that you have registered with us, like you have registered for our uh, service. So there is an email. And then when you go here, you can even delete a request once your service is done. So delete, it will be deleted from here. If I delete this home cleaning, clean washrooms, it will be deleted here. Then, if I go back uh, to providers, oh, what's happening? I think I break, I broke something. I think it's breaking. Uh, I'm not sure what is breaking this. It was just running five minutes before. I just checked. <laughs> I don't know what is why it is breaking. Uh, I'm not sure about this. It was literally working. I was doing the <laughs> confirmation. I don't know why is it breaking. Oh, I need to check. So this page will show all the confirmed bookings for the service provider. And it, he can mark completed or not completed on that table. So uh, it, it will show up like a table with all the confirmed bookings for that service provider. It's just that page. But I'm not sure why is it breaking. This is too bad. <laughs> this is too bad. <laughs> okay. Um, and another part, like I wanted to add Google Maps. That part I haven't done yet. And uh, one more thing which I tried but I failed was adding pictures for the service request. I was trying to add it with active storage, but it showed through it through like errors like uh, system system stack error something. So I tried resolving it; it didn't resolve. So I just removed that part. So uh, as of now, I'm just using a dummy picture here on the cards. Otherwise, it should uh, like show up the pictures related to that service request. Nope. Oh God, oh, why did it break? <laughs> I don't know why is it breaking. Uh, but I don't know, let me check. I did something maybe. I, I was just doing some last minute things. Maybe. Uh, uh, that's why you do that on a branch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this is just uh, the app about the app. Okay. Also a good argument for doing your presentation on video instead of walking through, but <laughs> that's for another time. Yeah. Uh, looks really great though. Uh, yeah, so much good stuff. Really love it. Um, same questions. Uh, what were your favorite parts to work on there? Um, favorite parts were like all of it. Uh, whenever any you know uh, information would show up on the front page it was like a big relief for me mm -hmm. because at the back end uh, the controllers were like really complicated and this was like a complex nested data mm -hmm. so it was really difficult for me to you know uh, plan everything and you know show up the ids within ids and with that information so if you do it in the front end i think it's more complicated uh, if you do it in the back end with your controller action, it is much more simpler. It's just that we should know how to do it, how to create custom actions to show up the custom routes with that information. So, yeah. Cool. Yeah, look, the styling looks really great. Oh, thanks. Um, anything so, else you uh, struggled with, do you think? 
uh, struggle was with the uploading of images only. So active storage yeah. didn't work for me. Yeah. Uh, because it was showing continuously show, uh, throwing this error of uh, system stack or uh, system stack error. So this kind this is kind of something uh, related to looping, and I couldn't find out where the looping was happening. So I need to figure that out, and it took a lot of time. But then I removed that part. Uh, so there's no option of you know uploading an image currently. But then on the cards, the images should be related to the service request basically. Mm -hmm. uh, what the user would upload so with the image and with the description of the service request awesome cool any other comments or questions all right looking good love it um cool joseph is up next with oh my, let's see this chess <laughs> I can't okay wait. let's see how this goes uh screen share is it this screen Yes, it is. Oops. Okay, so this is uh, my login page. Um, you can sign up or uh, create your own account. I have my own here. Uh, so I'm just going to log into my account. And then you get to like the main page. And here you can see my recent games I played. So let's like look. You can like scroll through. Actually, let's start from the start and see like an entire game plus play out basically i played this before just to like have some uh, recent games whatever so let's just go back here and then let's play a game however it's no one to play with so i have to log into another account so let's just do that actually let's make a new account just to make yeah uh, everything fine so let's make a name uh i don't know i like bill bill was a good name let's uh, username, I don't know. Uh, let's just make flat iron password. And then, okay, it has to be eight characters long. Excuse me. Okay, there we go. That's one character off. And then uh, sign up. And I should able to log in perfect so now we're here so now let's also play a game 10 minute game with one second increment and it should load in perfect so let's go back to my uh, so you see we're playing uh, I'm playing as Joseph against Bill it's cool we're both 800 because it's just a recent created account let's make a move okay I'm gonna respond on my other screen I have the other app so you see the time start ticking once I'm in a move and I got one second because that's how increment worked. So now his, it's his turn. So let's make a move for him on my other screen. Doing uh, queen or the Scandinavian defense, that's what it's called, but whatever. I'm just gonna take, uh, he moves out his queen. Let's try out some like complex moves here. Let's make an en passant, see if that works. Because so all of these like weird moves were like really tricky to code. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. okay, there we go. And uh, so here, so now if this guy moves two squares, then I should be able to make a on passant. Okay, that works perfect. And then let's try casting as well, just to make sure everything works. I'm gonna do this on the black side here. So let's just make a random move. And then uh, look at the king. They move two squares and castles. Perfect. And let's also make a promote as well. So let's uh, take this pawn, whatever he does, a nonsense move. And then let's promote. Okay, and he can promote to, let's, I want another queen. Okay, so that didn't go through. Why didn't that go through? No, let's update the page. Oh, it's not my turn. It's not my turn. Okay. Whew. Uh, just fix that. So, excuse me. There we go. I don't know why it didn't work, but uh, I promoted it updated under the screen as well. So, yeah, everything seems to work decently at least. And then uh, I can leave this game. It's going to show up 
and I can go back to the game and it's gonna go back to where I was. Can even chat with my opponent. And he can respond. And actually, if I make a move, it's going to actually update the name. If I can get that to work. Either way, it should show the names here, but it doesn't for some reason right now. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, you can log out, normal things. Uh, you can play different types of games. You can make a custom where you set the time. You can show your full history. This button doesn't work. I disabled it because I was getting some errors with, uh, but it shows all the games. And I think this is the most recent game we just played. Although the game isn't finished, so it won't let me show the... Okay, yeah, but that's about it. That's impressive. That's good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, what was your favorite part of this that you worked on? Well, as you've seen, I like play I like coding games. So <laughs> coding the chess was my favorite part. And uh, it was also the thing that took long most time and stopped me from adding more features that I wanted to add in the future. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and what did you struggle with? Uh, that's, uh, so I tried, I had tried, it's, it's, it's everything with the chess uh, related. It took me a surprising, a lot, a lot, surprising amount of time to code in, like to promote. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and actually doing the, what I talked about before was the, the stalemate conditions where like mm -hmm. 50 move rule and uh, the repetition moves. Repetition, yeah. Uh, I actually was able to solve that by making a, uh, uh, I just, coded a way to have all of the moves stored in a string or not uh, stored like the position of the board as a string. And then I just compared that throughout the entire thing on each move. Cool. Um, yeah, so many different ways to do stuff like that. And it's always more difficult than you think. So yeah, super yeah, great. Yeah, it definitely is. <laughs> yeah, games are surprisingly hard to do. Um, mm -hmm. It's real weird. Uh, cool, any other questions or comments going on this? It's real good. Yeah, match history is cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. Love it. Good stuff. How do I stop streaming? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, here. It's on my other screen. Even harder than chess. Uh, Zoom. Cool. Uh, Kevin, you're up next. Let's see what your idea bomb looks like. All right. Just saying, y'all don't laugh at me. I probably have like the worst project out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> but it's all good. I kind of dropped the ball. I, I got busy with a few other things. I kind of got distracted, but it's all good. Um, I can see my screen. Okay. So let me move this first. All right. So I I have this website. All right, where it's like a it's called idea bomb it's like a little social media page um basically what you can do is like post you can make posts people can like comment on them and stuff like that there's a lot of stuff i want to add though i want to add like a profile page where you click on somebody's name and go to their profile um and also a like system i was working on that this morning but i was having trouble getting uh things to render because the way i have the, my database set up some goofy stuff going on so i gotta figure that out but basically you only know, can create an account, you can log in. I can log in. I log in as Joe. Um, and you log in, it says hello, Joe, up at the top. And then you can go to home where you can see um, like things that people post. I want to be able to implement like timestamps into this, but I wasn't able to do that yet. I'll figure that out. I'm, I'm still going to be working on this for a while, to be honest. I want to be able to host this website and everything too. And the CSS sucks. <laughs> But uh, here you can uh, you can like delete posts that you make, and then you could like add comments and stuff like that. Or you can add a comment, and then it populates. You can remove the comment if you want to remove it, and then do that with everybody else's stuff too. You have a follows page where you can click on following, and you can see like the people that you follow. I'm following Abby right now, and you can also like add comments and stuff here if you want to. 
Um, you can go to the users page, you can see users. So these two buttons, I tried to make these conditional, but for the God on me, I just couldn't get it to work with the if statements. It just wouldn't render to the page for some reason. I don't know why that wasn't happening. I, I think the way I had it set up, it was some weird with the rat. It wasn't like a like an actual rat clause or whatever. So I'll figure that out, but you can follow and unfollow people. Um, like I can follow Jacob. And then when I go to following, his comments or yeah, his ideas post there. And if I go back to use unfollow Jacob, his goes away. <laughs> so that's that's good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you could just yeah, you could do that with everything else. I wanna be able I wanna add like a messaging system and stuff too eventually. But yeah. Cool. That's pretty much what I have so far. The basics are there. Um what part of this uh did you enjoy working on? um i guess setting up like the follow and unfollow system it took a lot of like trial and error in the database to get that to work the way i wanted it to work um and funny thing is especially with the delete request for like the following because i have to add that like include like two parameters in the uh whenever i made that destroy request so um i had to like make a custom raw for that i have to like go look at all the rails stuff to see like exactly how to do that. And it took a while to get that done. Um, I can show you all the code for that real quick too. Awesome. Kind of cool. uh, duh, 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 where's that at? Yeah, look, I have to like find by and then I have to use two two parameters embedded in that in order to link that up to what I wanted to get it to. And the route for that was pretty simple. It was like, it was just this. that was kind of weird but uh yeah it's nice. kind of cool yeah and yeah. what what part of all the all the stuff did you feel was like the worst struggle for you uh i i mean honestly just the the user stuff like with the yeah. with the following and stuff i had to like looking at the uh watch let me see where that is da, 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 da. yeah like up here i have to do a bunch of hazmat relationships or like indirect uh i have to so like since it's like two user IDs I have to like make like uh another thing to refer to that mm -hmm. so it was just yeah it was kind of kind of it was kind of different and there's a lot of trial and error stuff that I had to go through to get that done so yeah for sure cool yeah. um anyone else have any questions thoughts sweet well, you got you got it done so that <laughs> 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 is better than not doing it right um yeah Cool. Uh, I'm curious to see what Mason's got with his fantasy sumo app here. Okay, yeah, I just put a link in the chat if you guys want to follow along or like draft your own team. This works. This is a lot cooler if a lot of people play. So, um, yeah, hopefully the sounds work too, but we'll see how that goes. Um, yeah, this is my. Fantasy Sumo website, um, it's not a whole lot different compared to where it was a couple of weeks ago. And that's mostly because I've been trying to figure out deployment. Like I tried to do AWS Electric Beans, Elastic Beanstalk, I keep calling it Electric Beanstalk, bad name. Um, tried to do that and that was a huge pain in the butt. And then I tried um, this thing called Fly, which seems very promising and I had like a uh, relatively famous <laughs> software guy helping me try to do it, but we couldn't figure it out. Um, and then I talked to Alex and realized I was starting with a different template that was like not really configured to easily deploy. So on Tuesday night, I basically started over with a new template and rebuilt this pretty quickly. So hopefully it works. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna walk through what's going on. I guess I'll make a new account. Um, yeah, you can log in with an existing account or you can sign up. Should have been a little clap maybe that you could have heard. Um, when you click on these, there's a little sound too. Anyways, these are the rules. Um, you don't really need to know the rules, but like this explains the rules. This is like showing the all time high score and some other little info down here. 
Um, yeah, so once you're logged in, you can draft a team. If you're not logged in, you have to draft or you have to log in. Um, yeah, so here's a page where you can draft your team. Basically, you need like one guy from different tiers of ranks. So I'm just going to draft a team real quick. You click on a guy down here, it shows a bunch of info about them, and you press this button to add them to your team. You can also like search for people. I'm going to add Tucker Keisha. Um, or you can use this filter to only get specific ranks. Looks like that doesn't super work yet, but that's OK. Um, oh, yeah. And if you have like enough of them, it grays them out so you don't try to draft another one. Um, Cool, so I got all my guys. You can also like change your mind and decide you don't want that guy anymore. Um, I'm pretty sure if you try to submit without enough guys, it shows an error. Let's see if that works. Yep. Cool, so now you submit your team and it takes you to your account page. Um, where it shows like all the people that you just picked. Um, if you need to pick a new team for some reason, like if the day before the tournament, one of these guys decides that he's not gonna wrestle, then you can delete your team. I'm not gonna do that. Um, there's a page here that says all the teams that have been drafted so far. Um, so like Alex has a team, looks like Bo has a team. Um, these, I configured to sort by the point total, um, which is kind of cool. And then I built out this database that shows all kinds of info about all these guys, like how old they are, how tall they are, and how much they weigh, how many times they've won the whole thing. Um, and you can sort by any of these so you can see like what group these guys are all in, like all these guys train together, which is kind of fun. Or you can see like who's the oldest. There's one guy that's 38 and there's one guy that's 20. Um, and then I also have a database just for fantasy sumo stats that you can also sort the same way. If you wanna see who scored the most points a year ago or who has the highest average um, yeah, what else is I going to talk about? So the way that this is configured right now, um, you could hypothetically draft like after the tournament starts, which is next Sunday. So I have some stuff to do in the future, but like ideally when it's next Sunday, you won't be able to draft anymore and you won't be able to delete your team because then you'll just end up without a team and that's not fun. Um, once the tournament starts, these are all going to like show zeros and they'll be updated with the actual scores from the tournament. Um, and I just got a finished API that I've sort of been helping my friend put together. He put together an API that you guys could also access if you want to build your own Sumo apps that just has all of this data about all these wrestlers. Um, I, I built this site using seed data, but in the future, like next week or something, I'll probably switch to using this API instead of using my seeds. Um, yeah, and so then in the future, like this, I'm pretty sure this V0 is going to be the score for the tournament and the API will be configured to like automatically scrape 
an existing website that has match history and then like calculate points um, from there. So I don't really need to do anything. I just need to access this data point as it changes. And then that will change the scores that show up here and on the teams table and stuff. And yeah, there's some other stuff that I need to figure out for like what's happening during the tournament and after the tournament. But for now, it's set up just fine for before the tournament, which is what I was worried about. Um, I think that's all that I got for now. Awesome. That looks fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, so much, oh man, so much, so much complex stuff. It's great. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't really think of. There's like other Sumo databases, but I don't know if there's any database that I know of anywhere where you can sort all of this stuff this way. Yeah. Um, so it's cool for me as a huge Sumo nerd to be able to see like how how long these guys have been around, and yeah. I don't know. Cool. Um, a lot of this looks real fun. What was your favorite part? What was my favorite part? Um, I don't know, probably putting the database together and then like, um, yeah, just like figuring out how to get all this data that I've had for so long <laughs> to be on a website and like configure everything so that it's super hands-off because yeah. when I used to do this with a spreadsheet and I'd have to like manually input scores and teams and stuff and that was a drag. So if a lot of this is successfully automated, that's going to be really nice. Awesome. Uh, and what part was the biggest struggle? Um, Deployment for sure. Like I spent honestly a week like eight hours a day for five days trying to deploy <laughs> before I'd started doing render stuff. And then once I tried to do it on render, it took like an hour and a half at the most. So <laughs> <Where's the post laughs> that was frustrating. Important. Yeah. <laughs> but good, good information to have, right? Good practice. Yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Anyone else have any comments or questions? Sweet. Um, yeah, oh, go I got one. Go for it. Um, yeah, what's up? Yeah, you mentioned that you have this. Does is this working off of two separate databases right now, or this just is one? just one? So like all the wrestlers are coming from seeds that I have saved. Gotcha. I, I guess thought, is I thought you mentioned the database. Right. I thought you mentioned you had a second database. I was wondering if you were hosting like two different databases through Render, or because um, I didn't think you could do that. But I, I was just curious. No, nah, just one. And then like once I, once I start using this API that I've been sort of helping to build, like I won't need to use the seeds anymore. So the database will really just be like a a table of users and a table of teams. I, I got you. Have. That's what you're yeah. talking about then. Gotcha. Yeah. Nice. Anything else? Cool. Great stuff. Love it. Um, let's bring it on home with Bo's blog app. Yeah. Um, let's share my screen. You guys can see that. Cool. Um, yeah, this is my blog app. Um, works a lot like you would expect any kind of social media app to work like. Um, you... I have a front page here, uh, lists um, a bunch of different blogs. Uh, you can click on this or any of these and um, it shows the blog in a little detail. This is all faker data. So this is just strings of characters that don't make sense. So wouldn't bother reading it, but um, blogs are have categories and reviews. This one doesn't have a review. Um, but this one does, you can see those reviews. Um, this isn't really styled the way I like it. Um, I kind of just had to slap something on to uh, get it to work. But um, in the future, I hope to stylize this a little bit more. Um, so right now, no one's logged in at all. Um, so if you go to my blogs, you aren't able to see anything. Normally that would error out, but um, 
if a current user isn't defined, then it'll route you to this little component here that just tells you to log in. So I guess we could log in. I have a test account. Uh, my error handling is a little bad. It doesn't log you in, but it takes like two clicks. I had trouble managing state from time to time. Um, but once you log in, it'll take you to your blog page. This is this little link right here. Um, you can see the blogs that you've created. Um, you can edit the blogs. Um, so that pops up a little thing. You can edit your blog and that'll show up. Um, you could also go ahead and delete your blog. Um, yeah, and that change persists after uh, the component unmounts. So while you're logged in, uh, you could also make a new blog. Um, give it some content, and then you can add a tag. Um, once your blog's been posted, it's a little on uh, NPM package I found there. Um, that'll show on the front page. Uh, you can also search all blogs. So um, you can use this search bar to search different blogs, um, click on that. Um, oh, and now that we're logged in, we can create blog, you can comment. And that shows up. Um, you can also filter by tags. So, um, you know, finance doesn't have anything, gaming does, but yeah, that kind of works the way you'd expect. Um, I think that's about it. If you're not logged in, um, yeah, you can, I've already showed you, you can't go to your blogs page. Uh, you can't post any more. You can't post a blog, but unfortunately, I didn't really add much error handling. Um, so ideally, I'd have a little pop up here that said, you know, sign in to make a blog. Um, there isn't a lot of that, which is one thing I would have um, done if I had a little bit more time. I think that would kind of like polish everything off and kind of make it feel more like a website as if you uh, had an error pop up on the screen. It'll tell you to do something to fix that error. So um, but uh, yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. Um, if you want to go ahead and try to break my blog, um, go ahead, make a post or something like that. Um, probably wouldn't be too hard to find out uh, a bug there. <laughs> but yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I got. Awesome. And uh, last time, what was the uh, favorite thing about this project that you worked on? Um, I really enjoyed um, getting the slugs to work mm. on uh on it wasn't like a really like a, a user story or anything like that but i just kind of it's kind of what you expect from from yeah. most uh sites is the routing like that the one thing that i would i couldn't figure out is i can't access so if i press enter here in the on the um, on the address bar to go to this blog it errors out I, I couldn't figure that out i think it had something to to do with use parameters so i can select it it'll go to the page but i can't access that page from the address bar so that was one thing i couldn't figure out um so i, I might try a little bit more on that but um wasn't exactly like a core feature or anything like posting or uh you know leaving reviews or anything like that so um yeah i, I enjoyed that if i could add if I had more time to add stuff, it would probably be error handling and stuff like that. But um, yeah, other than that, pretty happy with how it turned out. Awesome. Um, I think it's I think it's one of those things where I could spend a year working on it and it would never be done. So <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think I'd rather just maybe uh, take the knowledge I learned from this and start something new. So for real, yeah, awesome. Looks good. Looks good. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any final questions or comments? Sweet. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself and give out, give yourself a round of applause. This all oh, looks really great. <laughs> Love it all. Um, cool. I'm going to stop recording and we'll do some administrative stuff. Uh, I'll post this up in the usual places uh, by anyone who's watching. <laughs>